Hello Internet, my name is Becky and today I will be talking about my July book haul. Now, I wasn't exactly thrilled about purchasing books because I was trying to put myself on a book buying ban and I was doing really really good until like week 3 of July when Book Outlet had an amazing sale of two books I've been trying to get my hands on for a while and I couldn't help myself. So instead of just having my subscription box books and books that I purchased in June but did not show up until July, instead we got an actual purchase of July books as well, resulting in a pretty hefty book haul. I hold 17 books this month, which is a lot more than I was planning on. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. Alright, the first book I got was One of Us is Lying by Karen and McManus. This is part of the books that I purchased in June that did not show up until July. And as you can see, I have already read this one. I absolutely loved it. This book was a solid four-star read for me. I already have a full review for this one, which I will have a link down below. There is a five-minute review that is completely spoiler-free. And I also have a blog post with some more spoilery thoughts. I'll have both of those down in the description box for you guys. The next book I purchased is one I've heard a lot of people talk about but I myself have not read yet and that is A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. I've actually began to hear some mixed reviews for it before it was all positive. Now I'm hearing some mixed reviews. I'm so super excited to check it out. I'm hoping to read this one in September, maybe August if I can squeeze it in, but we shall see. Alright, the next two books. Um, is one that I have started and one that I want to read very soon. Alright, the next two books um, are Illuminate and Gemina, both by Amy Hoffman and Jay Crystal. I have started Illuminate and about halfway through it, but then I had an impromptu vacation and I had to put it down because I did not have room in my luggage for it. So I will be finishing up this book very shortly. I'm hoping by the end of this week, but we shall see. And I want to start Gemini shortly after, so we will see. I've heard a lot of people actually say that they like Gemini better than Illuminae, so I guess we'll wait and see. Is that the theme of this video? Alright. The next book I have is one that has a, has a bit of a story behind it. So I absolutely love Strange to Dreamer. I thought that book was a lot of fun. I loved everything about it. Except for the fact that I only have the American edition. And if you've seen the American edition compared to the other editions, I'll have the American edition right in this-ish area, maybe on this side. I always get confused. Um, it's, it's an okay cover. I mean, it's fine for what it is. It did catch my eye in the bookstore until I, until I saw this edition, the pretty UK edition. Now, if you've been on BookTube for a while, you have seen this edition everywhere. I believe Fairy Lou actually sent it out in their March box. And, yeah, you can buy this incredibly gorgeous, gorgeous edition book depository. Except for the fact of I wanted the blue sprayed edges. This was only available on the first edition printings of these books. And I actually have a friend that lives in Australia that got this book in her March Fairy Loop box and it was nice enough to trade with me my edition of it that I bought off of Book Depository so I was able to get the gorgeous gorgeous blue spray edges edition and I'm so so thankful so once again big thank you to Jay I will leave her information on the screen over here so if you want to go follow her on Instagram I definitely recommend you should because she is a sweetie but big thank you to Jay for this All right. Now the next few bo er, books I have acquired. Now the next few books I've acquired are all the books I got in my subscription boxes. I will have those unboxing videos linked down below as they should hopefully be up before this video is up. But um, so, so in the Spearcraft book box was the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. This is a book I have been seeing and hearing about pretty much everywhere. And everyone actually told me to listen to the audiobook of it instead of reading the actual book, although they say it's enjoyable both ways. I have not decided which one I want to do yet, but we shall see since I have an audible credit for this month that I've not used yet. And this is the same book that was in the Owl Crate box. So the Owl Crate also gave us the Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. I will create these past few months 
from May all the way through the end of this year are doing exclusive covers. So you can only get the covers of the books inside the Owl Crate boxes. And so I'm actually really happy that I have both the original and the Owl Crate as I really like them both equally. I don't think I have a favorite. Um, we have both of them, and I mean, I'm slightly partial to the original just because I'm not the biggest fan of orange, but honestly, I love them both either way, so I'm really happy to have both of them. I'm really hoping to enjoy this book, but I'm really happy I have both of them, um, and yeah, so really thrilled about this one, although I'm not going to lie, I'm definitely more thrilled about the next two books. So the next book is a book that I got in my fairy loot box, and that is Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Flutie. I honestly, I have been so attracted to the concept of this book since I first heard about it a couple months ago. And this book quickly flew to the top of my anticipated releases lists. And I'm really excited to check it out. I definitely plan on reading this one in August. I really don't have time to read it, but I will be squeezing it in because look how pretty it is. And I'm so excited for this one. I'm hoping. It's as good as they say. I've known a few people that have read and really enjoyed it. It's getting some pretty good reviews of Goodreads. But I have been a little disappointed by the two other circus reads I've read this year. So I'm hoping that this one uh, breaks that cycle and lives up to the hype. And the last book I got from Subscription Boxes is the book I got in my Litjoy Crate box. And that is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. Which, fun fact, is actually the Prestopia Book Club pick of the month. So hey, I actually have a book I might actually be able to participate in the book club. What a, what a shock. Now I'm not going to lie, camera's not doing this book justice. It is so much prettier in person. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this is another one that honestly I don't know much about. Um, for uh, the previous two books, I know a lot about them because so many people have been talking about them. This one... Um, I only heard about it because I knew what the theme for Litjoy was. I did a little bit of snooping around. I figured it would be this one, but that's about it. It's about magic and thievery and mischief, and uh, it sounds so good. Like, the cover is gorgeous. It really reminds me of the Never Ending Story, and I'm just I'm so excited to finally check this one out. All right, so the next uh, stack of books are all the books I, bo I bought from Book Outlet, which officially broke my book buying ban. And you know what? I don't even care. The very first one from that list was Vasa and the Night by Sarah Porter. And this is one that I heard a lot of people talk about it. Uh, I think this was uh, given out in subscription boxes last year. And most people said that it was good but weird. But I wanted to definitely check it out. Um, it is based off of Russian folklore, so I think I might try to hunt down and find that story first. I don't know if that will help with my enjoyment of it. I guess we will see. But yeah, so I'm really excited for this one. Um, the next one was to get my uh, book outlet total up to $35. For those of you not familiar with, with book outlet, they are a large marketplace that sells gently used books for a very discounted price. And once it's gone off the website, it's gone for good, which is why you kind of snatch up the deals when they are there. And um, if you buy or if you spend $35 or more, you actually get free shipping, which is why I fell into the trap. So um, the next couple books are basically just to get my total up to the $35, but um, I'm hoping they're fine. The first one is called Deadly Little Skins, a prep school confessional novel. And I actually found out that this is the third book in the series, so I'm going to try to see if my library has the first two so I can check those out. It looks like an interesting enough concept. I don't really know anything about it. I just saw the cover and it was 89 cents, so figured why not. The next one is The Deaf by uh, Cody Keplinger. And um, I guess you see this is actor that has the movie poster on it. Um, honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan of the movie. I thought the concepts had potential. I mean, the movie was fine. I would give it like a 3 out of 5 star movie rating. Um, and I heard a lot of mixed reviews on the book itself, so I figured what might as well check it out. It looks like a really quick read, so I figured I can check that out you know, over a day or so if I really don't have anything else I feel like picking up, or if I'm just really in the mood for like uh, you know, a high school contemporary book. Um, so yeah, another, also this one's really cheap as well, so why not? Um, the next book I got was To All, All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. 
I'm very sure you guys know all about the series as the third book just came out this past year. I'm one of the few that have actually never read this one and just getting turned into a movie soon, so might as well hop on the bandwagon. So I have this first one, and if I like it, I will be picking up the other two, so fingers crossed. Um, the next book I got is called Extremities by David Luber, and this is an anthology of short stories about death, murder, and revenge. I saw this one. It was pretty inexpensive. I thought it would be a really fun Halloween read, so I will be reading this one in October. Um, the next one is called Trial by Fire by Josephine uh, Angliani. Things how you pronounce that? Um, honestly, I know nothing about this book, but the cover was really cool, and again, I need to get my total look to $35. Um, but yeah, this is one. Um, after reading about it, actually, you kind of piqued my interest a little bit, but for the most part, this one was a cover buy because it looked cool. Alright, the next book I got was. Three Dark Crowns by or Kendar Blake. Um, again, there's pretty mixed reviews on this one, um, but it was sent out last year in the September Owl Creek box. And um, yeah, it's one of the, I love the actual concept of it. You no know, three girls fighting to be queen. The sequel, I believe this one's only a duology, so the sequel is coming out, I believe, later this year, early next year. So I figure might as well be caught up for that. And the last two books are the reason I broke my book, my book buying ban in the first place. And that is the Six of Pros duology, the hardcovers with the gorgeous braid edges. And so that is Six of Pros and Quick Kingdom. Pretty much everyone, their neighbor, knows about the series. It has so much hype here on BookTube. Um, but this is a duology series by Lee Bardugo. And literally everyone has told me great things about it. They told me I need to finally sit down and read it. And um, these were on sale for like $13 for the entire box set. And normally they go for like $40 over here. So getting them for less than half off. Um, I am so, so excited to find this one. I have finally got my hands on them. So I can finally catch up and read these ones and see what all the bloody hype is about. <laughs> Those are all of the books I purchased in July and honestly, no regrets. Am I a little annoyed that I broke my book buying band? Of course, but you know what? I, in the entire month of July, I only spent $36 on books. Personally, I think that's pretty dang good for someone that was planning to spend nothing and usually spent over $50. So I am so, so happy about that. Um, I am, I see realistically I want to continue and try another book buying ban in August. I'm probably just going to give myself a book buying budget that instead of buying anything that looks cool, I'm only allowed to spend X amount of dollars on books. We will see. Um, also, oh, September is my birthday month and I have some cool things happening in August, so who knows, I might just hold off. Um, there's not really any releases in August that I'm dying to get my hands on, so I might actually be able to successfully do a book buying ban in August. I guess we'll see comes the end of the month. Um, I love to know how did your July book spending go? Were you on a book buying ban? Did you try to buy books? Was it a good month for you? Was it a poor month for you? Let me know down in the description box below. And as well always, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!